Today I have a PlayStation 4. It's a bit cumbersome on my desk. The HDMI port is severely damaged. Pins have been sheared upward or even pushed backwards. Did you know the pins could go back into the port with enough force? This hurts the board. But I'll be able to prevent that from happening with something later in the video. Let's get this taken apart. Four torque screws secure the bread portion of this plastic gaming sandwich. Eh, you shouldn't repair while hungry. There are two in the center and one on either side of the bottom panel. The hard drive cover can be popped off anytime. None of the screws hold it in. Sony thought ahead considering how many drives I see fail. Speaking of hard drives, I'll take that out. The manufacturer secures their drive tray with an engraved Phillips screw. The rest of the torque screws we need to remove are all the same size and length, so your screw map can be more of a screw pile. Two of those screws are holding the larger top panel in place. With a bit of persuasion, the top pulls away from the front. The front doesn't fall off though. Now we've got the heatsink bracket to remove. Two jumbo Phillips heads hold this in. There are some more torque screws to remove, then the fan gets unlatched over here. These are the butts of screws still holding the shield in place. Time to remove the bottom cover and get this power supply out of the way. The heads of those screws can be found holding grounding springs to the power supply. There are also three more of the same torque screws holding the brick in place. Uh, this one isn't turning. Well, it is turning, but stripping. But it's also recessed into the power supply. Time to get creative and safety up. I've got some grinding to do. I need a new Dremel. The power supply can be pulled away. It's hiding some things that need to be disconnected. The disk drive ribbon, antenna, and disk power are removed. Finally, the shield can be pulled away. These thermal pads are gross. The board is free to pull up and out of the housing. Two minutes and 18 seconds into this video and I'm finally showing you what the issue is. These pins are not doing well. They've been pushed through the port. The newer HDMI port on the PlayStation 5 has a metal back wall to prevent this. Alright, let's do this. Leaded solder will mix with the unleaded, holding the feet in, and lower the overall melting temperature. Next, the heat gun pours hot air over the top at 450 degrees Celsius, liquefying all the solder. Cleaning off the old solder is important. It'll be replaced with much better leaded solder. I'll get the data pads tinned and ensure a nice spot for the pins to rest. The replacement port gets pressed into place. You'll notice this one has a plastic back wall to help with the push through problem. Each pin is pressed its respective pad and checked. Back to the opposite side of the board, the feet will get a generous amount of solder to hopefully alleviate any future abuse it may go through. The board will also be cleaned of all this flux. It doesn't hurt, it just, it looks ugly. Over to the APU. The crunchy factory thermal paste needs to go. I'll replace it with delicious fresh thermal paste. A dollop will do. Time to reassemble and test. The board gets placed in with the ports first. The shield and heatsink bracket will be needed. The components will be reconnected, and the power supply will certainly be needed. Testing time. The HDMI port is solid as a rock on that board. This gold rectangle on the top is a capacitive power button. One tap will boot this console up. No signal is better than no cable connected. And there it is, we have display. I'll get this one fully assembled and cleaned. Thanks for joining me, and thanks to the now 600 people subscribed to my channel, it means a lot. You can be one of them by subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. And let me know if you have questions or comments. There are a few variations of this console, and I'm happy to help if you run into trouble. See you next time.